Albion is the oldest known name of the island of Great Britain. Today, it is still sometimes used poetically to refer to the island. The name for Scotland in the Celtic languages is related to Albion, Alba in Scottish Gaelic, Albane genitive Alban in Irish, Nalban in Manx and Alban in Welsh, Cornish, and Breton. These names were later Latinized as Albania and Anglicized as Albany, which were once alternative names for Scotland. New Albion and Albionoria Albion of the North were briefly suggested as names of Canada during the period of the Canadian Confederation. Arthur Phillip, first leader of the colonization of Australia, originally named Sydney Co. New Albion, but later the colony acquired the name Sydney. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology The common Britonic name for the island, Hellenized as Albion, Albion and Latinized as Albion, genitive Albionis, derives from the Proto-Celtic nasal stem asterisk Albi, U, oblique asterisk Albion, and survived in Old Irish as Albu, genitive Alban. The name originally referred to Britain as a whole, but was later restricted to Caledonia, giving the modern Scottish Gaelic name for Scotland, Alba. The root asterisk albio is also found in Gaulish and Galatian albio, world, and Welsh elfid, elbid, earth, world, land, country, district. It may be related to other European and Mediterranean toponyms such as Alps and Albania. It has two possible etymologies. It may derive from the Proto-Indo-European root asterisk albho, meaning white, cf. Latin albus. This is perhaps in reference to the white southern shores of the island, though Celtic linguist Xavier Delamar argued that it originally meant the world above, the visible world, in opposition to the world below, i.e., the underworld. Alternatively it may derive from the Proto-Indo-European root asterisk alb, meaning hill. Attestation. Judging from Avianus's Ora Maritima to which it is considered to have served as a source, the Massaliote Periplus originally written in the 6th century BC, translated by Avianus at the end of the 4th century, does not use the name Britannia, instead it speaks of Nessos Iron and Chi Albionon, the islands of the Iernians and the Albiones. Likewise, Pythias ca. 320 BC, as directly or indirectly quoted in the surviving excerpts of his works in later writers, speaks of Albion and Irn Britain and Ireland. Pythias's grasp of the Nessos Pritnike, Nessos Pritnike Britannic Island, is somewhat blurry, and appears to include anything he considers a western island, including Thule. The name Albion was used by Isidore of Carrix, 1st century BC, 1st century AD, and subsequently by many classical writers. By the 1st century AD, the name refers unequivocally to Great Britain. But this enigmatic name for Britain, revived much later by romantic poets like William Blake, did not remain popular among Greek writers. It was soon replaced by Britannia, Britannia, and Bretania, Bretania, Britain, Bretanos, Bretanos, Britain, and Bretanicos, Bretanicos, meaning the adjective British. From these words, the Romans derived the Latin forms Britannia, Britannus, and Britannicus, respectively. The pseudo-Aristotelian text on the universe, 393b, has. N tutoi gi men nesoi majestai tinchinus and usai dio bretonicae legomene albion chi. There are two very large islands in it, called the British Isles, Albion and Irn. Britain and Ireland. Pliny the Elder, in his Natural History, 4.16.102, likewise has. It was itself named Albion, while all the islands about which we shall soon briefly speak were called the Britanniae. In his second-century geography, Ptolemy uses the name Alwion, Alwion, Albion, 
instead of the Roman name Britannia, possibly following the commentaries of Marinus of Tyre. He calls both Albion and Irn Nesoi Bretonicae Nesoi Bretonicae, British Isles. In 930, the English king Athelstan used the title Rex et Primicerius Totius Albionis Regna, King and Chief of the Whole Realm of Albion. His nephew, Edgar the Peaceful, styled himself Totius Albionis Imperator Augustus, Augustus Emperor of all Albion, in 970. The Giants of Albion A legend exists in various forms that giants were either the original inhabitants, or the founders of the land named Albion. Geoffrey <laughs> of Monmouth According to the 12th century Historia Regum Britanniae, the History of the Kings of Britain", by Geoffrey of Monmouth, the exiled Brutus of Troy was told by the goddess Diana, After many adventures, Brutus and his fellow Trojans escape from Gaul and set sail with a fair wind towards the promised island. The island was then called Albion, and inhabited by none but a few giants. Notwithstanding this, the pleasant situation of the places, the plenty of rivers abounding with fish, and the engaging prospect of its woods, made Brutus and his company very desirous to fix their habitation in it." After dividing up the island between themselves, at last Brutus called the island after his own name Britain, and his companions Britons, for by these means he desired to perpetuate the memory of his name. Geoffrey goes on to recount how the last of the giants are defeated, the largest one called Gomagat is flung over a cliff by Corineus. <laughs> <laughs> Anglo-Norman Albina story Later, in the 14th century, a more elaborate tale was developed, claiming that Albina and her sisters founded Albion and procreated there a race of giants. The Albina story survives in several forms, including the octosyllabic Anglo Norman poem, De Grant's Genes, dating to 1300 1334, Georgine Elizabeth Brereton ed. 1937, also Juvenile ed. De Grands Giants qui primes conquistrent Britannia, 1842. A prose English translation is given in Richard Barber's anthology. 1999. According to the poem, in the 3970th year of the creation of the world, a king of Greece married his thirty daughters into royalty, but the haughty brides colluded to eliminate their husbands so they would be subservient to no one. The youngest would not be party to the crime and divulged the plot, so the other princesses were confined to an unsteerable rudderless ship and set adrift, and after three days reached an uninhabited land later to be known as England. The eldest daughter Albina Albine was the first to set shore and lay claim to the land, naming it after herself. At first, the women gathered acorns and fruits, but once they learned to hunt and obtain meat, it aroused their lecherous desires. As no other humans inhabited the land, they mated with evil spirits called incubi, and subsequently with the sons they begot, engendering a race of giants. These giants are evidenced by huge bones which are unearthed. Brutus arrived 260 years after Albina, 1136 before the birth of Christ, but by then there were only 24 giants left, due to inner strife. As with Geoffrey of Monmouth's version, Brutus's band subsequently overtake the land, defeating Gogmagog in the process. Topic manuscripts and forms The octosyllabic poem appears as a prologue to 16 out of 26 manuscripts of the short version of the Anglo-Norman prose Brut, which derives from Wace. Octosyllabic is not the only form the Anglo Norman day grants genes, there are five forms, the others being the Alexandrine, prose, short verse, and short prose versions. 
The Latin adaptation of the Albina story, De origin gigantum, appeared soon later. In the 1330s, it has been edited by Carey and Crick, 1995, and translated by Ruth Evans, 1998. Topic: <laughs> Diocletian's daughters. A variant tale occurs in the Middle English prose Brute, Bre -ed, the Brute or the Chronicles of England 1906–1908 of the 14th century, an English rendition of the Anglo-Norman Brute deriving from Wace. In the prologue of this chronicle, it was King Diocletian of Surrey, Syria, who had 33 daughters, the eldest being called Alban. The princesses are all banished to Albion after plotting to murder their husbands, where they couple with the local demons, their offspring became a race of giants. The chronicle asserts that during the voyage Albion entrusted the fate of the sisters to Apollon, which was the god of their faith. The Syrian king who was her father sounds much like a Roman emperor, though Diocletian 3rd century would be anachronistic, and Holinshed explains this as a bungling of the legend of Danaus and his fifty daughters who founded Argos. <laughs> Later treatment of the myth Because Geoffrey of Monmouth's work was regarded as fact until the late 17th century, the story appears in most early histories of Britain. Wace, Layamon, Raphael Holinshed, William Camden and John Milton repeat the legend and it appears in Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. William Blake's poems Milton and Jerusalem feature Albion as an archetypal giant representing humanity. In 2010, artist Mark Sheiky donated the 2008 painting, Two Roman Legionaries Discovering the God King Albion Turned into Stone, to the Grosvenor Museum Collection. See also Britain place name. Terminology of the British Isles Perfidious Albion Nordalbingia, based on the Latin name for the Elbe River, Alba New Albion <laughs> Notes <laughs>